during the presentation, we're making forward and statements which cannot be relied upon. So thinking about what we are, we're a gene and cell therapy company, a core part of our business is our lentibial vector platform. That's absolutely core to how we do our business nowadays. Some background, this will be a multi-billion dollar sector in the next five to 10 years. We're seeing drug launches now in the next few months, maybe six to 12 months, quite a few of them, Stremvelis, various CD19 with various companies. Obviously we have interest in a particular one. Um, we're seeing lots of trials ongoing, ex vivo with cars, with um, STEM, NKs. And also, we're seeing a lot of trials going, ongoing in vivo as well at the moment, uh, both with the brain and with the eye. Our vector, lentivirus vector, does have advantages over, over the other vector types. First of all, lentivirus vector is an integrating vector, so necessary for the um, ex vivo products. But also, on top of that, we're now seeing some significant um, signs of efficacy from our work in, first of all, in wet AMD uh, previously and uh, Parkinson's. We've seen four-year data now with indications of uh, efficacy going forward there and no side effects. So effectively, we're there, we're, we're going forward and the promise is showing through of this uh, once-only treatment for long-term correction. Our own products, we um, actually say we have our own products we're working on, both in vivo and ex vivo, as well as the fact we have partners coming to us to talk to us about those as well. But what's really interesting at this point in time is um, it's our birthday, come later than this year, around November time. It's 20 years of Oxford Biomedica at that point in time. And it's taken 20 years to be what we are today in Lender Vector. There's no question of that. It's taken a very long time to get there. But now we have what we believe to be the one stop shop for what Lender Vector, working with partners and having a long term interest in their products going forward with them. That's taken expertise of people, it's the facilities, it's the IP, the patents and the know-how. A huge range of things go together there to put that whole thing into place. We have world-class bioprocessing facilities. We've spent £26 million over the last 18 months, and I'll go through what we have in a few minutes. But also, it's actually the people we've got as well. It's the expertise within the business, which gives us this advantage to be able to drive the business forward. Deals we've done... We've done Novartis uh, on the CD19s and other products coming through from them as well. We're already working on a second one of those at this point in time. Green Cross Lab Cell, uh, Immune Design, plus others coming through in 16 and 17. We think we'll be signing a few more uh, late 16, maybe early 17, with further deals coming through there as well. Our own products, we have um, several products now, OXP 102 and 202. Having done a lot of work at the board level, we decided the risk-reward structure we can take into the company at this point in time, it was best to spin out our products at uh, the end of uh, preclin into phase one, two trials with SPVs. And effectively driving those forward, where we actually are having a lot of interest currently, we're pushing those things, as, and I'll go through the products in a minute as, as, as we go through them. We have royalty interest as well from uh, Novartis, from Mimi Design and Green, and Green Cross Labs in the future plus GSK and Sanofi. So there'll be some significant monies coming to the business over the coming years. So looking back over 20 years, the business has um, been going, spun out of Oxford University back in 1996, and effectively then specialising in lentivirus vector products. We're the first to put lentivector into the brain and into the eye. And from there, we've actually treated 60 patients. We've seen um, some good signs of efficacy going forward there, plus we've seen no significant um, safety issues. The platform, to talk about that, what we have around it, we have, uh, first of all, the IP, the patents and the know-how. And I'll stress later on in the presentation how the importance of know-how in our business structure and how we do deals with people around patents and know-how going forward. <coughs> then we have facilities. Again, a massive expansion. Um, James Noble mentioned earlier about the, the pressures of building a business from a, a low number of people to a larger number of people. We changed all three sites very recently, completely refurbed them, spent £26 million there, plus at the same time we grew from January 14 about 80 people to 250 today. A significant change and that does take some getting your arms around at times as well. So it's been a big change for the business, but a very, very exciting one and a very good one. On the quality side, we have many differentiators around our business, and effectively one of our big differentiators with new partners is quality. To work with Novartis, we've had to prepare ourselves for an FDA inspection sometime in 17. So in doing that, we've had to raise our standards to a level which is um, beyond that which we had before, I have to say. And effectively having this now, we are very attractive to many partners who come to us, and it can in many cases be a differentiating factor to bring people to work with us. We have five in-house products in the business at this point in time. They're going to be spun out or, um, or licensed out going forward. Partnerships, I've mentioned those before. And, of course, the licensees we have at this point in time are Sanofi and GSK. This is a very basic slide to show for an audience like this, so I won't um, go through it too much. I'll just use, use this slide to talk about the differences between lentivirus vectors and AAV. 
The big thing about that is we can carry larger therapeutic payloads. For example, um, OXB-102, our Parkinson's drug, is about to go into man. That carries three genes. AAV could not carry that capacity, so it's very important we have the capacity for us to car carry in the vector. Again, uh, we can permanently modify dividing cells, and we have no pre-existing immunity going forward. So we are now seeing the hypothesis going forward, a single in treatment can give long-term or permanent efficacy for patients. On the other side, I think our part in the Novartis project actually is not uh, taking the blood or taking out the T cells and growing them. We have the vector that's transduced by Novartis with their um, T grown T cells, put back into the body, and that's their work happens there. The T cells become hunter T cells. This explains our business model very well. There were several slides to do that. This one does the, the business model extremely well. The core of the business at the bottom there is a lenter vector platform with it the IP, the patents and know-how, facilities and expertise. Now going up on the left-hand side is the partners programs. We work with them there. This can bring us various types of revenues as we go forward. You can best buy processing revenues, buy processing incentives and royalties based around the IP we have out to the long term. Very important here, though, we do continue to invest in the platform because effectively the platform is what differentiates, differentiates us from other parties. So here we keep giving technical advantages here to keep us ahead of the game and make partners want to come to us because we can do simply a better job. On the right-hand side, OXB products, we're spinning these out now into special purpose vehicles and out licensing them. You can see there we can get development milestones, we can get um, royalties like Sanofi, but also bioprocessing revenues if we do the manufacturing for that as well. Very important to the business model too is to keep investing in research pre-clean programs. We have a lot of skills in-house for that, so we've got three or four of those we're working on at the moment. We'll bring those forward to the point where they're ready for phase one and again spin them out for the future. I work with Novartis, that's very important to the business model of course. We started working with them back in 2012. We were doing um, literally feasibility work at that point in time. A year later, we did another deal with them in 13, June 13, for uh, producing some batches for them to GMP standard. From there, October 14, we bought the final deal. Three parts of that. For, there were the, um, the IP license, where they get the upfronts we got for that, plus royalties in the future. Then there was the um, process development work. That was three years long at that point in time, until probably October 17. Well, that's going to be massively extended now because effectively they're filing their BLA on our process, so it's actually being done with us, with commercial supply, for their drug that gets launched probably in the middle of next year. The third part was the process development work we do with them, and currently we've always worked in the past on a cell factory process. Part of the incentives we got from them was to go to a 200 litre serum free bioreactor process, which we're validating at the moment. And the early stages of that have shown some significant improvements in yield, plus massive reductions in cost of goods. So very good so far there. Working with them on the uh, BLA, which will go in um, probably early next year. Launch mid next year in the first drug. As I said, we're working on the second one. And royalties will start coming into us from the first drug probably mid-year. And the deal is such that if we have further cut products with them, we will get further royalties on those as well. Let's give you just a picture here, an example, some examples here of um, companies working in lentivector clinical trials. The top there, we see all the ones working in clinical trials. At the bottom, you see the pre-clin trials. The graph to the right shows you the number of trials starting in the various stages um, at this point in time over the years. You can see there, a lot of the companies, we have spoken to almost all of them at various times. You obviously don't get deals with all of them, but we expect to do further deals with some of these companies in the near future. So the other uh, slide that talks about really how our business structure now works. We still have a massive interest in the platform, of course, but alongside the products are so key to us. So we have the five in-house products we're working on at the moment. Three of those are priority to us. I'll go through those. The first one would be um, OXB-102 for Parkinson's, 202 for corneal graft rejection, and 302, which is our CART 5T4 for solid tumours. They are our, our priorities now to spin out into SPVs and keep moving forward. And two below them, we plan to do the same thing. We have some interest in those as well. It's OXB-201 for wet AMD and also um, 301, which was uh, the old Trovax for um, some solid tumours. Again, exciting business to drive that forward. We also have a deal with Sanofi. They have two of our drugs that we developed in their portfolio. They're taking those through trials currently, and effectively we get development milestones from those and royalties as of when they launch. That's in Stargast disease and Usher's syndrome 1B. The interesting part then becomes the what's below that last line, talking about what we get uh, these deals from, where we say we have the long-term interest in partners' products. Here we can get the interest in developing, uh, process developing air with them, we can do uh, uh, manufacturing, bioprocessing, but also in some of them cases royalties as well in the future. So uh, we have two drugs uh, with Novartis, one with Immune Design and two with GSK. We expect that list to grow and keep growing over the next couple of years as we have more deals coming through the business in this format. 
We also work in um, proprietary R&D as well. Now, this can be a good way to keep growing value within the business. If we think about on the um, left-hand side there, our proprietary products coming through research and preclin. We will spin these out of phase one, but we have a lot of things we're looking at currently. Several rare orphan diseases in the eye. There's one um, in the brain, also uh, one for respiratory. And also by the end of 18, we will have found our lead candidates um, with our uh, collaboration with Green Cross Lab Cell. On the right-hand side, as I said earlier, it's absolutely key to us we keep um, developing our technical platform because that's the way we get business. So thinking about what we'll do there, selling vector engineering, we've got a trip system to give us a better yield for the future, selling producers uh, lines, we're working on those as well. Coming down, the analytical testing, ever improving, making quicker, making more robust. And to the bottom there, talking about the scale-up to bioreactors, the 200 litre serum-free bioreactors, because that is the secret to get the cost of goods down to a level which makes things like... Um, respiratory disease as possible, otherwise you'd spend millions of pounds on vector per patient. This is a way to be able to do those things. Our IP, just looking across the page there, the original patents we had uh, runs out in 17. Uh, we have some safety patents running out to 2023, and the guys on the right hand side, they're relying on those to start with. Manufacturing patents to 29 and 34, and the big thing for us in doing deals, certainly with someone like Novartis and the other deals we've done, is working with uh, um, the know-how. The know-how is key to our business going forward. It allows us to actually drive things. Um, the royalties to go way beyond the expi expiry of the patents. Facilities, and this is where we spent our £26 million over the last 18 months. So the new uh, building there is Windrush Court. We moved into that in January 15, having bought it in late 14. We completely refurb the labs from chemistry to biologics, and effectively that's where we do all of our analytical testing now. Our house we bought back in 2012, at that time, we had one GMP um, suite. Now it's got two, uh, with space for a third if we choose to put it in. And then there's uh, Yarnton. Um, this is about a 10 minute drive from the office. We bought a, an empty warehouse back in January 2015. I say bought, we rented it actually. And we fitted it out completely to build a GMP suite. Uh, this is again the cell factory process in there. And that was running and validated by the end of January 16. Now, the artists were stunned how quick we did it, and I think so were we. But I've got a lot of thanks to say back at the office uh, to people who did that. Because it's in the, uh, Fantastic effort and allowed us to keep producing enough drug and advice to keep their trials going. A bit more detail about what we have in each building. Our house, we have two GMP suites. One is cell factory and one is bioreactor there, with space for a third if we want to. Um, onto Yarnton, we have uh, another uh, cell factory process uh, GMP room there. Effectively, we can transfer that across to bioreactors if we choose at the right point in time. And then there's, um, of course, all the analytical testing goes back on at Windrush Court and the labs there. So key to running a cell and, cell, cell and gene therapy business. So for the future, thinking about what's going to happen in the next 12 months first, for Novartis. They'll be presenting their data, we believe, at ASH in December. And, of course, that's a very a big um, thing for them to show the data for the drug CTL19. On from there, we think the BLA will go in probably very early in 17, with a launch probably mid-17, and we're starting to flow to us after that. Coming down onto delivery platforms there, we expect further contracts there with new partners and allow us to have long-term interest in their partners' products going forward. And also, we expect to successfully develop and be able to use the 200 litre bioreactor process, which we're currently validating at this point in time. Again, a big step forward for us there in how we can reduce cost of goods. In-house products, we expect to spin those out into SPVs or license them out, and expect to start trials with um, OXP 102 and 202, which is Parkinson's on corneal graft rejection, um, within 12 months, and expect to see those moving forward. So I look towards the end of 18. What can we look like by then? Down the left-hand side, the core Vector platform will bring other ideas through from our research programs into the point where they're just really going to phase one and spin them out. Also then, we'll have uh, identified our lead candidate from uh, Green Cross, which is the best one there to go with, with the NK cells. We continually then will work as well on the technical platforms to make sure we can do the best we can with our lenta vector and stay ahead of the game there to make sure we get the new contracts. And the plan here, of course, is to make us the best partner to go to for lenta vector for the one-stop shop. Into the middle column, talking about the products and the licenses. There you can see Novartis, the deal there would be the drugs on the market. We're giving commercial supply to them for CTL19. The second drug we're currently working on will be in clinical trials by then, and we expect further track products to come down the line through us to Novartis as well to work on going forward. So now will be in a phase two, three pivotal by then to actually uh, take Stargardt disease forward. It'll be 305 with immune design should be in clinical trials by then. And our own products we spin out, we expect to see three counts of data probably from the phase one, two, with successful timing on the spin outs that is. Um, 
2 by 2 for corneal graft rejection, two cohorts of data, and expect to see the CART 5 d 4 in a phase one clinical trial by then as well. All of this happening will allow us to actually really uh, gear our company, have lots of venues coming in. We did 18 million pounds of revenue back in 2015. We expect to increase that in 2016 by, by over 50%. Onto the, so onto the last column on the right there, what you see is a situation where we have our bioprocessing facilities either at capacity or, or nearly at full capacity if we can pull all these things off. So in sum, we need to get back over what I talked about earlier. Uh, gene therapy and cell therapy, very exciting, growing exponentially over the next few years. Our vectors have advantages over the others. A lot of people are seeking us to work, to work with them on their in vivo and ex vivo work with our vector products. We have a world-class biopharmaceutical bio um, plant back at the office where we can produce huge amounts of lentivirus vector, plus we have the uh, ability to process develop as well and a great track record. And onto the products, we have our own products which will spin out into SPVs and so then move forward and do the work we can with those, as well as working with partners to have a long-term interest in their products going forward economically as we receive royalties and do the work for them along the way. Thank you very much.